Welcome back to the channel and I'm excited to give you a tour of my updated sim racing setup. If you're already a subscriber, you may be familiar with my previous setup. And if you're new to the channel, now is the perfect time to subscribe. If you're a sim racing fan, you know how important it is to have the right equipment to maximize your experience. In this video, I'll show you the components I've selected to build my dream racing setup and explain why I chose them. A good cockpit or chassis provides a stable platform on which to mount your wheel, pedals and other accessories. I've chosen the brand new ASR Pro chassis from Advanced Sim Racing for its adjustability, ease of use and zero flex experience. This cockpit features a range of adjustable components including unique quick adjusting wheel mount, allowing me to find the perfect setup regardless of what wheel I'm using. The ASR Pro introduces a new striking flat face aluminum profile design that offers excellent stability using the highest possible grade and thickness of aluminum provided in the sim racing industry to date. This frame allows me to adjust everything to my preferred seating position while allowing quick adjustments to steering height and distance when swapping wheels of different sizes. The cockpit is super solid and is future proof to accommodate even a D-Box motion and haptic setup hopefully one day. After spending more time on this rig, I'll release a detailed review and discuss my experience building with this unique new chassis. A good wheelbase is essential for a realistic racing experience. I've chosen the popular SimiCube 2 Pro with 25 Newton meters of peak torque for deep immersion, advanced features, excellent build quality, and overall better compatibility with third-party wheels. I've been a fanatic DD1 user since I started sim racing. I've been long curious about what SimiCube offers and the ability to try different wheels on the market more efficiently by utilizing the SimiCube quick release system. So far, I've been very impressed and found the driving experience an improvement from the DD1. So I'll be comparing the Fnatic DD1 and discussing my experiences using both and why I ultimately chose to switch to SimiCube in a future video. Changing to the SimiCube wheelbase allowed me to try out some different wheels. First up is the brand new MPX wheel from Grid Engineering. This comes at a more reasonable price point for a high-end wheel from the team that brought us the gorgeous and jewel-worthy Porsche RSR replica wheel. I was excited when this was first announced and quickly placed my pre-order. So far, I've been very impressed and it has quickly become my daily driver. It features a full billet anodized aluminum construction, adjustable paddles and clutches, comfortable polyurethane grips, 87 controllable RGB LEDs, two seven-way switches, eight buttons, nine rotary encoders, and two rear auto buttons, which are found in real life race cars. It's a lot of wheel for the price and after further testing, I'll review this in more detail and release a video in the coming weeks. My second wheel combines the Sim Racing Bay's BB Ultra wheel plate and Turn Racing's R320 wheel rim. This makes for a great wheel to use with various vehicles, either GT or open wheel. The BB Ultra is a solid plate with great tactile feeling for the paddle shifters and buttons, and it costs lesser than the similar Asher wheel plates. The Turn Racing rim is one of my favorites. It's highly durable and comfortable to use and is compatible with a large selection of wheel plates. The third wheel combo I've chosen is Turn Racing's BB2 button plate paired with a traditional leather wrapped GT style rim from Advanced Sim Racing. This makes for a great all around wheel suitable for road or GT style vehicles. The Turn Racing button plate offers plenty of functionality at a great price and the ASR leather wheel is a simple well made rim that's comfortable to drive with and I enjoy this combo's minimal understated look and functionality and it's approachable wheel for guests to use when trying out my rig for the first time thanks to its traditional shape. I have always considered pedals a crucial part of my setup and I've had the opportunity to try out a few different sets. I've recently settled on Asatec SimSports Invicta pedals featuring a firm two-stage hydraulic brake that adds extra realism to my racing experience. I love the feel and overall design of these pedals and the orange adjustment knobs made finding my preferred setup an easy task to make on the fly. I recently reviewed these pedals on the channel and made some initial observations. Overall, my experience has been primarily positive. Every frame counts when it comes to sim racing, so I use triple MSI Gaming 32-inch 1440p curved monitors. They are a great overall value and offer up to 165 frames per second with a 1 millisecond latency, which is plenty for racing. I've mounted these using a freestanding triple monitor stand from Advanced Sim Racing to match the infinite black finish of the ASR Pro chassis. I also opted to upgrade the Visa mounts to their advanced micro adjustment mounts. 
These make getting the monitors perfectly aligned a much easier task. I highly recommend these to anyone who has struggled with aligning their displays. And then for a more seamless view out of the windshield, I've installed the ASUS ROG Bezel Free Kit, which is intended for 27 inch monitors, but using adapters from SimSports Gadget makes the kit work with my 32 inch screens. I encourage you to check them out for all your sim racing accessory needs using our affiliate link below and you'll receive 5% off. We will receive a small commission in return that helps support my channel. For accessories, I have several enhancements and peripherals attached to my rig. For starters is my trusty Fnatic H pattern and sequential shifter. This is still one of the best packages on the market in my opinion. It features a solid build quality, excellent shifting feel, adjustable tension and a switch on the side to change modes within seconds. I don't think this has been beaten yet as the best bang for buck shifter in the industry. To the left of my wheel I have a button box from Ignition Controls. It features 6 rotary knobs, 10 LED backlit buttons, 3 toggle switches, a large funky switch for navigation, and a gorgeous illuminated engine start button. This box is built like a tank with an all metal enclosure, it feels very high end and looks right at home with the rest of my setup. To the right of my wheel I'm testing the new Stream Deck Plus. Even though this has fewer buttons than the more popular 15 key or 32 key models, it instead has 4 rotary knobs that are great for either controlling lighting or audio mixing different outputs and inputs from my PC, like Crew Chief, music, my microphone and even balancing in-game audio. I can also quickly mute any channel by pressing on the knobs. Above that is a small OLED display screen showing the volume levels. Finally, I have 8 illuminated buttons to customize in any way I want to either control in-car, control various aspects of my PC, and even help with changing scenes within OBS when recording videos. Above my wheel, I'm using the Grid DDU5 for displaying dashes and telemetry. The super clear display is housed in an all-metal enclosure and is mounted using SimCore's LEV mounting system, which allows me to extend the display or adjust the angle and quickly remove it when not in use. I highly recommend using a dash display for sim racing. It allows you to set your in-game camera in any way you need without missing out on helpful information and adds another layer of realism to your setup. It also has LEDs for revs, flags, or pit limiter that can be customized in any way I want. For haptics, I'm using the Buckkicker Gamer Pro. It's a more powerful unit than the outgoing Gamer 2 and New Plus models, which is perfect for my heavier ASR Pro rig. This adds another layer of immersion allowing me to feel changes in the road surface, suspension and even engine vibration. It truly has become something I cannot live without and I encourage anyone to pick up a unit for themselves. You certainly will not regret it. One of the most essential parts of my setup obviously is the PC build. To maximize performance and graphics in any sim title, I've gone with the powerful Intel i9-13900K processor which is cooled by NZXT Z73 Kraken AIO with 64GB of G-Skill DDR5 RAM and I use a Zotac Gaming Trinity 4090 GPU in order to maximize my graphics and frames. All of this is housed in the NZXT H7 Flow case for maximum airflow and cooling with a sleek and a minimal look. To film content for YouTube, I primarily use my iPhone 14 Pro. Still, when I want to sit in the rig and film different content or share my screen, I have a Razer Keo Pro Ultra webcam on top of my monitor that can capture up to 4K at 30 frames per second. I also use a Shure MV7 mic mounted using the Rode PSA1 Plus. Finally, I move it between my rig and desk setup depending on if I'm recording voiceover or want to record on the fly. I'm a big fan of using both gloves and racing shoes when sim racing. Not only is it comfortable, but it also adds some immersion and fun to my racing experience. For gloves, I'm using a pair of the Maradness gloves, which I think are one of the best on the market for sim racing, and even allow you the possibility to customize it with your name or flag. The shoes I'm using are the Sparkle K poles, which are normally used for karting, but work excellently obviously for sim racing, and are very comfortable to wear, and allow me to use a hard brake pedal without putting strain on my feet. On the other side of my small den, I have a desk setup where I can do work or edit my YouTube videos. I'm using the Apple M1 Mac Studio which is powerful enough to handle pretty much anything I throw at it and can edit 4K footage with ease. The display is an LG 4K 32 inch monitor that can swivel left or right or rise up and down. I have another mic mount from Rode for recording voiceovers directly into my videos. 
For audio, I'm using the Edifier Luna speakers. They sound excellent, but I also like the pod-like design and think it suits my setup well. My peripherals include the MX Keys and MX Master Mouse from Logitech. Both are great to use and support up to three devices, allowing me to also use my SimRacing PC at my desk, which is also connected to the same monitor in case I want to play other games. I have an IKEA lamp with built-in wireless charging and a wall shelf above displaying some of my Porsche model collection. Thanks for watching this tour of my setup, and let me know in the comments what you think or if you have any questions about anything you've seen here, and I hope it may have inspired or given you ideas for your own setup. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more sim racing content, and if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and hit that like button below. Thanks for watching, and until the next one, stay safe and happy racing.